Welcome to the second Sabbath of the week of prayer, 2024. I'm Percy Harold. The word and the final proclamation of the gospel is the title of today's reading, and it's written by Ellen G. White. This article is excerpted from chapter 38, the final warning of the great controversy written by Ellen G. White herself. In every generation, God has sent his servants to rebuke sin, both in the world and in the church. But the people desire smooth things spoken to them, and the pure, unvarnished truth is not acceptable. Many reformers, in entering upon their work, determined to exercise great prudence in attacking the sins of the church and the nation. They hoped, by the example of a pure Christian life, to lead the people back to the doctrines of the Bible. But the Spirit of God came upon them as it came upon Elijah, moving him to rebuke the sins of a wicked king and an apostate people. They could not refrain from preaching the plain utterances of the Bible, doctrines which they had been reluctant to present. They were impelled to zealously declare the truth and the danger which threatened souls. The words which the Lord gave them they uttered, fearless of consequences, and the people were compelled to hear the warning. Thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed. As the time comes for it to be given with greatest power, the Lord will work through humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his service. The labourers will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit than by the training of literary institutions. Men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. By these solemn warnings the people will be stirred. Thousands upon thousands will listen who have never heard words like these. In amazement, they hear the testimony that Babylon is the church, fallen because of her errors and sins, because of her rejection of the truth sent to her from heaven. As the people go to their former teachers with the eager inquiry, Are these things so? The ministers present fables, prophesy smooth things to soothe their fears and quiet the awakened conscience. But, since many refuse to be satisfied with the mere authority of men and demand a plain, Thus saith the Lord, the popular ministry, like the Pharisees of old, filled with anger as their authority is questioned, will denounce the message as of Satan and stir up the sin-loving multitudes to revile and persecute those who proclaim it. Suppressing the Light as the controversy extends into new fields and the minds of the people are called to God's downtrodden law, Satan is astir. The power attending the message will only madden those who oppose it. The clergy will put forth almost superhuman efforts to shut away the light, lest it should shine upon their flocks. By every means, at their command, they will endeavour to suppress the discussion of these vital questions. The Church appeals to the strong arm of civil power, and in this work, Papists and Protestants unite. As the movement for Sunday enforcement becomes more bold and decided, the law will be invoked against commandment keepers. They will be threatened with fines and imprisonment, and some will be offered positions of influence, and others rewards and advantages as inducements to renounce their faith. But their steadfast answer is, Show us from the word of God our error. The same plea that was made by Luther under similar circumstances. Those who are arraigned before the courts make a strong vindication of the truth, and some who hear them are led to take their stand to keep all the commandments of God. Thus, light will be brought before thousands who otherwise would know nothing of these truths. Conscientious obedience to the word of God will be treated as rebellion. Blinded by Satan, the parent will exercise harshness and severity toward the believing child. The master or mistress will oppress the commandment-keeping servant. Affection will be alienated. Children will be disinherited and driven from home. 
the words of Paul will be literally fulfilled in, as it says in 2 Timothy 3.12, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. As the defenders of truth refuse to honour the Sunday Sabbath, some of them will be thrust into prison, some will be exiled, some will be treated as slaves. To human wisdom, all this now seems impossible. But, as the restraining spirit of God shall be withdrawn from men, and they shall be under the control of Satan, who hates the divine precepts, there will be strange developments. The heart can be very cruel when God's fear and love are removed. As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light, and, when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy, popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoiced in the truth employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. They become the most bitter enemies of their former brethren. When Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to answer for their faith, these apostates are the most efficient agents of Satan to misrepresent and accuse them, and by false reports and insinuations to stir up the rulers against them. Standing for Truth In this time of persecution, the faith of the Lord's servants will be tried. They have faithfully given the warning, looking to God and to His Word alone. God's Spirit, moving upon their hearts, has constrained them to speak. Stimulated with holy zeal and with the divine impulse strong upon them, they entered upon the performance of their duties without coldly calculating the consequences of speaking to the people the word which the Lord had given them. They have not consulted their temporal interests nor sought to preserve their reputation or their lives. They are hedged in with difficulties. Satan assails them with fierce temptations. The work which they have undertaken seems far beyond their ability to accomplish. They are threatened with destruction. The enthusiasm which animated them is gone, yet they cannot turn back. Then, feeling their utter helplessness, they flee to the Mighty One for strength. They remember that the words which they have spoken were not theirs, but his who bade them give the warning. God put the truths into their hearts, and they could not forbear to proclaim it. Every new truth has made its way against hatred and opposition. Those who were blessed with its light were tempted and tried. The Lord gives a special truth for the people in an emergency. Who dare refuse to publish it? He commands his servants to present the last invitation of mercy to the world. They cannot remain silent except at the peril of their souls. Christ's ambassadors have nothing to do with consequences. They must perform their duty and leave results with God. As the opposition rises to a fiercer height, the servants of God are again perplexed. For it seems to them that they have brought the crisis. But conscience and the word of God assure them that their course is right, and although the trials continue, they are strengthened to bear them. The contest grows closer and sharper, but their faith and courage rise with the emergency. Their testimony is, we dare not tamper with God's word, dividing his holy law, calling one portion essential and another non-essential to gain the favour of the world. The Lord whom we serve is able to deliver us. Christ has conquered the powers of earth, and shall we be afraid of a world already conquered? A mighty movement. Persecution in its varied forms is the development of a principle which will exist as long as Satan exists and Christianity has vital power. No man can serve God without enlisting against himself the opposition of the hosts of darkness. Evil angels will assail him. 
alarmed that his influence is taking the prey from their hands. Evil men, rebuked by his example, will unite with them in seeking to separate him from God by alluring temptations. When these do not succeed, then a compelling power is employed to force the conscience. But so long as Jesus remains man's intercessor in the sanctuary above, the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit is felt by rulers and people. The enemy moves upon his servants to propose measures that would greatly impede the work of God. But statesmen who fear the Lord are influenced by holy angels to oppose such propositions with unanswerable arguments. Thus, a few men will hold in check a powerful current of evil. The opposition of the enemies of truth will be restrained, that the third angel's message may do its work. When the final warning shall be given, it will arrest the attention of these leading men through whom the Lord is now working, and some of them will accept it and will stand with the people of God through the time of trouble. The angel who unites in the proclamation of the third angel's message is to lighten the whole world with his glory. A work of worldwide extent and unwanted power is here foretold. The Advent movement of 1840 to 1844 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. The first angel's message was carried to every missionary station in the world, and in some countries there was the greatest religious interest which has been witnessed in any land since the Reformation of the 16th century. But these are to be exceeded by the mighty movement under the last warning of the third angel. This article is excerpted from chapter 38, The Final Warning of the Great Controversy by Ellen G. White. Seventh-day Adventists believe that Ellen G. White, who lived from 1827 to 1915, exercised the biblical gift of prophecy during more than 70 years of public ministry. And that brings us to our questions for reflection. 1. How can we be bold and unwavering in chaotic times? And 2. What have you seen and heard in your study of the Word that you can share with someone else. This article was read by Dr. Percy Harold, reader of the Sabbath School Adult Bible Study Guide audio recordings in Sydney, Australia, and available through Christian Services for the Blind and Hearing Impaired at Adventist Media. Remember, God is always faithful. This concludes the week of prayer readings titled, I Will Go and Share God's Word. We hope you have enjoyed hearing about this aspect of the Christian life. If you know someone else with vision loss or a print disability that could benefit from a recording of either the adult Sabbath school lesson or week of prayer readings, please get in touch or share our contact details. Christian Services for the Blind and Hearing Impaired is located in Adventist Media at Wurunga in Sydney, Australia. Contact us either by the Adventist Media website or phone 02 9847 2296.